Hello and welcome back to Falcon Blues TV. Now once again I'm not joined with Dave or Barney, I'm joined with Everton legend Graeme Sharp. Graeme, thanks very much mate. No problem, anytime. Obviously we're here for Everton in the community tonight and you must be no more than me. What a great job Everton in the community do. Yeah it's fabulous, you know, I think you know everybody knows you know how big the football club is, but you know it's not just what they do on the pitch, it's what they do off the pitch and you know we've been involved in many many schemes still out at this moment in time and it's important because football is so important in, in the city and Everton are, uh, are a massive football club so it's important it's, uh, we, we look after our supporters and, and people in the local community as well. Sure, I mean, myself and Dave, we got involved with the 5k run mm -hmm. a few weeks back, uh, we got to meet Duncan, mm -hmm. got to shake his hand and I'll be honest I made a bit of a gaff because, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously we've got the, the names on our yes. Yeah. so he comes up, a bit nervous, shake his hand and go away. Hello Duncan, he goes, hello Paul, do you know my name? It's right there, son. <laughs> and I was like, oh well. But uh, no, it, it's, a, it's a great job what Everton mm -hmm. and the do. I know Darren does quite a lot. Yeah. We raise quite a bit of money. We had Big Joe Royal yeah. at the Falcon not too yeah, long ago. Fabulous. Uh, it was a great, great night. It was very fun. Yeah, but, listen, um, we, we get many, many you know, requests you know, uh, to, to, to work with the community and help the community. But if you just look at the, some of the, the, the sessions they run, you know, how they help, you know, yeah. people suffering from dementia, uh, people from mental health issues, all over the spectrum, we're doing something. And I think that's something that we can be very, very proud of. Yeah, it, it is something to be proud of, and uh, like David Moyes coined a long time ago, the People's Club. Yeah, very much so. And I, I don't think that'll ever change. You know, I, I think you when know, we talk about local rivals and everything else, but I think in terms of, of what's happening off the field, I think they, they, there's only some people only want to top the league, and that's us. You know, I think a lot of clubs are trying to copy the way that we, that we do things. But you just look, even here uh, this evening with the Blue Base and, and everything they, they, they actually do. I was at an awards ceremony last night in London for one of our young uh, supporters who won a, a national sport award last night. It was fantastic, due to his fundraising for Everton in the community. Uh, little Alfie, so you know, everything's going on at the moment is, is fabulous. Obviously, things can be better on the pitch, but you know, hopefully, that we can turn that around as well. Of course, and, and speaking of things on the pitch, obviously, Duncan Ferguson's been appointed mm -hmm. the, I suppose we call him the interim caretaker yeah, manager. Yeah. Um, I myself, I grew up watching Duncan Ferguson, mm -hmm. he's one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I listened to his press conference there, I thought he said all the right things. Mm -hmm. You know, cover every blade of grass, get stuff in. Yeah. What, what qualities do you think Duncan will bring well, to listen, tomorrow? Listen, it's a strange one, you know, you look through the years and when, when the manager goes, you know, and somebody steps in, usually the results are quite positive and you sure. see an upset, that's what we need. I think the results in midweek went great for us in terms of Brighton winning and Newcastle winning and you see us down at the bottom of the table, it's not, it's not nice to look at, but Dunkey's coming in, you know, we don't know if it's going to be one game, whether it's going to be two games, three games or whatever. Uh, but listen, he knows what, what Everton's all about, he knows what it, what it means and what it takes from the players. So I'd expect a, a performance uh, tomorrow to be fully committed. Uh, I think they might see a different style of play. You know, personally for me, after going over to Anfield in midweek, we were, we were all over the place defensively. I'd expect us to be tighter as a group, tighter as a unit, but also from an attacking threat. You know, they were, I think the atmosphere will be great, I think the punters will be up for it. Uh, the changes come, you know, unfortunately that, that didn't work out for Marco Silva, but Duncan's in charge now, but what we must do as a group as the supporters is, is get behind them and hope the cheer is on to, to win tomorrow. It won't be easy. No, uh, but, it's it's but it's certainly a game we can win, you know, and I think that's that's the thing when you look over the season, I think we've underperformed. And when, when you look at the teams we've lost again, that's the most disappointing thing because Really, in an ideal world, we should be beating the teams like you know Norwich and Aston Villa and Sheffield United, uh, Brighton. Uh, you know these are these are the games that we really should be picking up match points. So that's been a disappointment. But hopefully, Duncan can get his tenure off to, to a positive start. We uh, hope so. I, I, I wouldn't like to uh, come in at half time. Got to tell enough Duncan as well. You know. Well, I think <laughs> I think it's changed. I think people will probably look at that and see that that's what is going to happen. And, but football's changed now and Certainly, yeah. we know that it's not the same as what it used to be, certainly in my day and then obviously Duncan's as well, but what he's got to do is he's got to try and get a tune out of the players. You know, that's something that we haven't seen this year in many occasions. Uh, and whether the change of manager brings that about, we'd like to think so. Uh, but you know, it's one of those things, we, we just got to support them as much as we can. Uh, and as I said, we've got a tough run of fixtures coming up. So it's, it's, uh, it's one that 
I'm sure Duncan will be looking forward to. You know, but before looking too far ahead, we've got to look at, at Chelsea tomorrow. They've started to improve. Uh, Frank Lampard's done a good job in there, but uh, I want to see tomorrow a, a hostile atmosphere inside Goodison Park, getting behind the team, uh, getting the team committed, fighting, passionate, you know, things that we all want to see our players do. And if we can see that tomorrow, I think the result will be around the corner. I hope so. Now, Graham, I've also have to ask you about Howard's right? Yes. Because I've, I've watched it three times yeah. now. My dad barely enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, my brother enjoyed it. Now, my dad always said that I cursed ever because I was born in 88. Yeah, well, but, yeah, then your fault. Uh, my fault, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, we have uh, Dave Feely on quite mm -hmm. a lot on Grand yeah. Old Team. Mm -hmm. And what a great job Dave, Rob Sloman did, yeah. obviously Keith. Mm -hmm. um, how did it all come about for you? How early on did you know about this? I knew a few years ago and you know it was uh, Rob had got in touch with me and you know obviously Andy had given given Rob my number and, and told him to get in touch with me. Uh, so it was in the in the, the, the plans for a for a couple of years. Uh, Rob explained his, his background, the fact he was an Evertonian uh, and he just wanted to tell the story about you know a team that was probably denied more glory in Europe, you know, because of the the, the ban in English clubs. So he wanted to tell that story, and I think you know when you see the finished article, I think he's done a very, very good job. You know, uh, I'm not sure if we can get many acting roles out of it in terms of the players, but <laughs> I thought some of the players were brilliant. I, I, I thought Pat Vandenhoe was excellent in it. Yeah. You know, Pat doesn't really say an awful lot, but I thought he came across really well in, in the yeah. film. Uh, you know, obviously Andy has always got a bit to say and, and Reedy as well. But overall, I thought it painted a really decent picture, and I think what came out of it from from everybody, I said I've probably seen it as many times as you, is the fact that everybody remarks on how much we were as a team. Team spirit, and, yeah. and even now when we meet up, that hasn't changed. You know, there's no little cliques, so there never was a clique in the best room or anything else. We were all lads, just a local football team. We all worked together, we're good mates, we would look after each other, we enjoyed ourselves on and off the, off the pitch and you know that helped to to guide us to success. Obviously there was talent in there as well, don't sure. get me wrong, but in terms of camaraderie, I think, you know, if we had that, and I'm not saying there's not that today, but football has changed, but I think to be successful, you've all got to be in it together, you know, and that certainly was the case, and I think Howard's Way was a great example to show the people, you know, the younger supporters who heard about it, but probably didn't see any of the footage, you know, what it was all about. So all the reviews I've had from it have been positive. That's always good to hear. That's it. And if you've not seen it, get on it on Amazon, iTunes, it's available everywhere. Yeah. But before we go, I have to ask you one question. Yeah. About getting that goal of the season and uh, you're expecting some. Uh, <laughs> nice thing. Have you still got that seat out? Absolutely not. I couldn't tell you where it is. I wouldn't even let the dogs line it. Uh, yeah. To be fair, not. It was just it was one of those things. I thought it was funny, you know, because we really look forward to getting a nice bit of crystal or something yeah. engraved and all that. And then, when they actually went on and Elton Wales mate was at the time when they presented me, I'm thinking here we go and they came up with this tea towel and it might even have been red which made it worse uh, <laughs> but I couldn't believe it, needless to say I think it was in the bin first thing well, in the thanks again and no one problem. final message to our John Thanks very much for haunting him with that folly. It still haunts him to this day. Listen, I haven't seen him for a long time, but he's uh, he's a great guy, and you know, wish him all the best. Obviously, he's out and about at, at the moment, uh, but hopefully, the next time he's he's here, he'll uh, he'll actually put his hand in his pocket and, and take us out for a few drinks. <laughs> well, Graham, thanks again, mate. No problem, thank and uh, Farron will say up the toffees, Colin Chong.